It is, uh, yes, it is February the 2nd, 2022. 22nd. 20, February 22nd, 2022. It is the second month, the second day of the week. It's 22222. 2022. But the last time this happened was in, in 1600. Yeah, they said it won't happen for like another 200 years. Yep. Which will be 22s. So it will be 2222. 22, 22, 22. 22, 22. Yeah. So, like, I know you're not a big Swifty, but I've been hearing a lot of that song today. <laughs> the 22 song. And I haven't, which is good. Um,. <laughs> No, it's it's uh we would have done the show yesterday, but we I had to do final cleaning to make sure we could release the kitten. And she has been released. And where are you? Where kitten. Are you? I, I she is if she shows up, she shows up. She is a squirm creature. She's not like green. We, we have a little feral in our closet. Not our closet, oh my god, in our garage <laughs> that we got spayed, and I think we're gonna release her tomorrow. No. But that's less exciting than your baby. Well, yeah, Lumi, it's, we, we let her out in the house, and she, it was like, I don't know who threw this cat away, and that is ridiculous. She's so cute. She is, she, she's running around like great kitty races. Um, she was perfectly socialized, so we know we spent, she spent time with her mother. Um, she knew how to litter, litter box and everything. No fear of people at all. You know, she she was a little skittish about Grady, but I'm probably because something something attacked her tail when she was loose. We don't know what, but a little skittish around Grady. Now she's fine with him. They're friends. Um, she so them playing on the tower. Yeah, she's she's completely dom domesticated, not a feral, which means somebody just dumped her. And yeah, it, she's and we let her. She has just taken to the house just fine. Not been very destructive at all. There's been a couple of moments that I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't. If you chew that, you'll get electrocuted and die. Don't do that. It takes um, them a while to learn that cords are not toys. But aside from that, she is like completely well behaved, perfectly indoor. I don't understand who the fuck nice. is this cat. It is, it is ridiculous. And suck. But she, and she's getting along perfect with Grady, which was the whole idea. Because if, if Sarah wanted to get a cat, we, then we wanted to make sure Grady would be yeah, okay with it. Yeah, obviously. And they are. He's, he's still not sure what the f*** to do. <laughs> he's like, why are you so small? You should... Why, why so small? No, it's, she's like, why are you so f***ing big? No, it's more like... Fluffy. It's more like, lay down. No, 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 lay down. <laughs> No, 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 no. Stop it. Okay, I'm going to go over here and lay down. No, don't follow me. What are you doing? No, I'm going to lay down. All right. Let's get the intro rolling. Because we've got the best thing. We, I, I, I say that this is just, the story's kind of secondary. Let's get the intro going. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out me. Worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff right back here for a little segment we like to call Crazy. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm crazy. And, um, sometimes, sir. So sometimes, I I'm going to send you this picture. You can't spoil it, okay? I'm going to send you this link because when you see it, it's, it just, this is amazing. We get a lot. We have over the years gotten a lot of great mug shots on the show. Yeah, we have. But this one is a Hall of Famer. We it, should have a Hall of Fame. We should. This is, uh, th this is, this mug shot tells the entire story. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, let's let Terry get it and then, uh, there with you. Oh, there he is. Wow. <laughs> oh, 
boy. That's magic, isn't it? <laughs> that man just got back from, like, all of the multiverse. <laughs> He he just he just returned from the multiverse of madness, not the movie. The actual multi he has seen some shit. shit. 51 year old Florida man told authorities he was, quote, high and happy after he was stopped for recklessly driving Wednesday morning. Um, Deputy said Theodore John Evans, 51 of Jupiter, was stopped Wednesday after multiple callers, ah, multiple callers reported a Toyota RAV4 running red lights passing and no passing zones and not staying within the lanes. Uh, deputy said Evans eyes were bloodshot and watery. The release said Evans quote, behaved erratically speaking quickly and nonsensically about how high and happy he was due to his use of a vape pen, marijuana candies, a glass pipe and a vape pen were found in the Toyota. Now this was not just the marijuana. Okay. This was not just the Mary Jane. This was not just, the devil's candy. Um, I like the devil's candy. Because the glass pipe, that's meth. So he they was. Do make, they do make glass marijuana pipes. They do. They're very small. <sighs> so we but don't the know fact for sure. That, the fact that he's running red lights and talking like. Really He's doing chatty. the fucking Leland Palmer down in the street with the fringe on top. <laughs> the dude, uh, the Sapphire Cat, the dude looks like he just stepped out of a Stephen King movie. His eyes are so, like, it looks like he's about to cry blood. <laughs> just, he's amazing. It's just, that's... Or his eyeballs are about to explode. You you can smell this man through that photo. Yeah. He smells like desperation. And sweat. <laughs> and weed. That is just okay. Wow. I mean, you can't even go off. Oh, I'm what what how, I'm sorry, officer. How what what seems to be a problem? <laughs> oh, because the officer pulls up and you're too busy going. Your badge is so shiny. <sighs> is, it, is it candy? Well, we gotta go to San Diego for the next one, and Sarah, it happened again. You gotta narrow that down. I know we do. <sighs> From the Your Ass Ain't Santa Claus department. Woman stuck headfirst in chimney. For Too nearly, often. For nearly an hour. Rescued. Uh, woman so was, she was like Winnie the Pooh in into the oh, chimney. Oh, yes. Head first. Which is not how you should be. That, that's the no. stupid. Woman was rescued Sunday after coming trapped head first in a chimney. Um, police received reports about 5 p.m. of a domestic issue at a home at Allegheny Street. When officers responding to the scene. Uh, Lee said they got an updated report that someone became lodged inside the chimney, prompting police to request for fire rescue resources. When crews arrived at the scene, we did confirm she was stuck head first with her feet up in the chimney about midway down. Her head was approximately six feet off the ground and she was eight or 10 feet from the top of the chimney. So she made a little progress down there. That's true. Um, think I'm claustrophobic until I read things like this. I know, right? It just, it fucks with you. Ooh. So yeah, it, 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 she, all right. So she made it down a ways. And then the, here's the thing about chimneys. Here's the deceptive thing about chimneys. Just because they're one width in one place does not mean they're the same width the entire way. That changes. I mean, it's it, you almost wish people had whiskers because if a cat <laughs> comes up, if a cat comes up to a hole, they're like, no, I can't fit in here. Fuck that. No, humans need that. Yeah. Bec and you th might be thinking, well, that's just stupid. Why would they need this is why this happens like every month. We're supposed to have giant brains. 
but they're not working. That make us not do that, but they don't work. The other problem with chimneys is they are filled with carcinogens by design. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's all burnt shit. Like the purpose of the chimney is to take all the shit you're not supposed to breathe in and filter it out of the house. Yep. So if you're just in there marinating for however long, um, you're gonna be fucked up. Are you two done? Or are you gonna be doing kitty <laughs> racing? They are kitty racing back there. <laughs> anyway, um, he has to train her. He has to teach her. It's, I. You know what I want to do? I want to to invent Bluetooth whiskers for humans. Like, like I want a little headset that you put on people with like whiskers coming out. And, and they have little headsets with ears that no, move, no, no, right? no. But yeah, we get the whiskers on there, and then you put little headphones in, and. When you put your head through something that can't fit, you'll get a little message in the headphone saying, no, stupid. No, no. Get your head out of there. You're not going to fit. You're not going to fit. Get out of there. <laughs> and it'll tie you into your phone. that's how it works for cats? It, it, it'll tie into your phone so that out the loudspeaker will come on and say, hey, someone come get this idiot. They're about to go down a <laughs> chimney. I would make a fortune. It doesn't you seem would. like I would. But I would. Honestly, you'd make a fortune for the intended use and then the secondary use because the furries would love it. Functioning whiskers? That's a moneymaker. I don't want to think about what holes they'd be shoving those into. Okay. <sighs> Next up. So we got a Valentine Fallout story, and this is one of those you gotta watch the kids. You gotta watch the kids. Because not only teenagers are the worst, we've we've identified this, they're the worst. Not only do they have they're starting to learn malice, but they're also incredibly stupid. Yeah. But they think they're really smart. They think they're really smart. Oh, I put that in the main channel. Anyway, you can check in the main channel if you want. Whoops. Um <laughs> Baton Rouge girl 14 is allegedly caught trying to rent a hitman to kill an ex on Valentine's Day. Authorities in Louisiana, it gets it's, it's it's stupider than it sounds. Authorities in Louisiana are crediting a prank website from preventing a teen boy's murder in Baton Rouge this week. On Monday, Valentine's Day, a 14-year-old girl found the website rentahitman.com and ordered a hit Honey. on her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I think this is the plot of next week's Euphoria. <laughs> I don't know if you watch Euphoria. They should call that show "Your Teenagers Are in Danger." The teen. This sounds something that would happen on the show. This teen, whose name has not been released due to her age, was arrested after an administrator in the website alerted authorities to her request. Per the statement, um, this isn't the first time Rent a Hitman has cooperated with authorities to help detain people soliciting murders. Despite its, its satirical website descriptions, including a clause claiming that all clients' information is protected under the, quote, Hitman Information Privacy and Protection Act of 1964, the website's, <laughs> site's web, it is, it is, it, <laughs> the site's webmaster told ABC7 News that he's received hundreds of requests since starting the site, preventing an estimated 150 murders as of November. And then you think about the fact that nobody in law enforcement thought of this. Right? This is a public fucking that service. They will self-select if you allow them to. Like, goddamn. On the site's homepage, visitors are con confronted with a button that reads, Got issues? Click here. The links leads to a service request form, which collects the visitor's full name, birthday, contact information, and address. And... 150 people have fallen for that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now, honey, 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 you're 14. I know when you're 14, everything feels like forever. I know. It's because you're full of and chemicals. Everything seems like the end of the world. You're full of fucking chemicals. It sucks. Your yeah. brain is, on, is just 
doused in chemicals. You were yeah. you were clinically insane until about the age of twenty five. Yeah, you were fucking clinically insane. So it it's it's, but but you got to push through and not try to murder people, right? Because murder is bad. Even if you're going through puberty, yeah, that's not an excuse for murder. No. It seems like it should be. It does. It does. But it's it's not though. A hundred and fifty people. It man has saved some lives. I'm telling you, this sounds like next week's euphoria. Like Maddie's going to be like, Nate Jacobs must die. Hmm. So, um, you're back to Florida and, um, you know, when you're a kid and you hear someone is a doctor or, or, uh, a fireman or, or like, like an airplane pilot, you think, wow. They must be the super smartest people. And you think they're like, it, it's like you get your little plastic, uh, little mini fig toys of them. And you think if yeah. they're that, that they are that toy in their way. They are just that thing. They do the doctor thing and they're super smart. And they must be so smart. They probably know everything and never stick their dick in something they shouldn't. And then you grow up. Naked lawyer busted for bar antics, and that is not, a, that's actually a pun, sadly. After she was refused service by a bar manager, a drunk Florida lawyer went into the restroom and then emerged, quote, unclothed and completely naked. It's a bit redundant. Well, you can be unclothed, well, no, I guess, you, yeah, yeah. Because if you're unclothed, there are no clothes. I mean, you could be not naked, but you'd have to be covered in something that wasn't clothes. Yeah. Wow, we're parsing this way too hard. Okay. <laughs> According to an arrest report, Kelly Elkins, 49, and that's a, that's a mugshot. She's just like, fuck you. Um, entered the beach lounge in St. Pete Beach around 2.15 Friday, but was, quote, intoxicated to the point the manager refused to serve her. Instead of departing, Elkins walked into the restroom and then came back into the bar, unclothed and completely naked. Um, when Elkins refused the manager's request to get dressed, cops were summoned. Arriving at the bar, a Pinellas County Sheriff noticed that Elkins was still naked and had to be told repeatedly to get dressed. <laughs> but the attorney would only put on a hoodie, which she did not zip up. Elkins claimed she was too tired to put on her pants. <laughs> Which, you know, I've been there. <laughs> I know. It's not because I was drunk, but I've been there. You hear that for a second, you're like, well, you know, that's that's actually, yeah, that's legit. That's a legit excuse. I, I can I can feel yeah. it. Like in my case, it's just depression. But I know that feel. <laughs> what? It I'm confused how you thought the answer to we're not going to serve you. You're too drunk. Was to get naked. Well, that's to prove she could take her clothes off. She was sober enough to get naked. Ta-da! Listen. If you're, if, you're, if you're a minor earmuffs right now, please. If you're one of my nieces and nephews and you found this, no, you didn't. <laughs> I think anyone who's of drinking age and has dated can attest that you do not need to be sober to get your clothes off. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, sometimes the drunker you are, the easier it is. Yeah. So you're not helping your case, honey. I, I just, it, why in the, uh, bare naked lawyers, oh. Uh, <laughs> how do you get, you're a lawyer. It's still, it's like, you're a lawyer. Yeah. And this is what's happening in your life. You definitely know that's illegal. I, wh what in the, it just, it does not, I, I'm a grown person and it does, not, I, I know they're a human being and just because they're a lawyer, they're still a human being, but it's still clicking in my head. Like, you're I mean, Rudy lawyer. Giuliani's a lawyer. Uh, also, yeah. Also, having been in more than a few bar bathrooms in my life. Oh, God, yes. Uh, 
I'm not putting back on any clothes that I left in there. Ew, no. Those those just getting burned. Those are just getting certainly burned. not my undergarments. Because that is the least fun oh. way anyone's ever gotten an STD. Well, like, from... they did a study and found that women's purses are like covered in fecal matter because we put them on the floor when we use public bathrooms. Oh, God, no. Yeah. So like use the purse hook if you carry a purse. Don't or even if you have a jacket, don't put it on the floor of the stall because it's gross. That And that's any public bathroom. That's the ones that are well maintained. This is a fucking bar. Anything goes, there's, pretty much. There's semen from four months ago. <sighs> well, let's... <sighs> all right, we, we said you gotta watch your kids. And that, that is true. Yeah. And this dad took that notion to heart. They just went a little too fucking far. Holy crap. I, I was kind of, didn't know whether to put this here or on tech Q&A, but this is definitely kind of a here story. Dad takes down town's internet by mistake to get his kids offline. French dad faces jail time and a hefty fine after using a signal jammer to prevent his kids from going online. And taking the rest of the nearby town town with them. Did they misspell oops? That's the French way of spelling it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Starting at midnight until 3 a.m. every day of the week, the French town of Massange uh, found that their cellular and internet service were no longer working. After a mobile carrier reported the issue to the uh, age, French public agency regarding this stuff, their, their FCC. Public agency responsible for managing the radio electric spectrum in France, it was determined that a signal jammer was being used to block radio frequencies in the town. Um, I'd be so mad. Those are my peak hours. Technician traced the jamming signal to a house in a neighboring town where Homer admitted to pursing a jammer online and using it to force his teenage kids offline. Um, Jared installed by the family, uh, father of the family, to provide, prevent his teenagers from accessing the internet with their smartphones instead of falling asleep. So here's the thing. All right. And I'm going to lay some internet knowledge on you right now. That's just going to something you don't realize. Um, some places pass on signal for internet wirelessly. Even the ground internet is passed on wirelessly, depending on how they do it. Um, so when you put up a signal blocker, it doesn't just, it's not in a little bubble. It's interfering with, the, it, it's canceling the signal out. It's like interfering with the wavelength and just like equalizing them. So it's, yeah, it fucks it up and it's not in a little bubble. It just goes out everywhere. So, so every, and I, as someone here who's had problems with my fucking internet, and I've had to call my internet people repeatedly about my upstream band. Now you're paranoid. For every night from midnight to 3 a.m., he turns on the fucking jammer. You would be tearing your fucking hair out. I would, because I am on my phone doing dumb internet shit relentlessly for those three hours. I could be, like, up on the roof. Like, I can't. I can't. I can't, I'm not getting it. I'm no bars. Do you have any bar? I got none. I got none. And all he had to do was shut off the router. Well, no, the cell phone, cellular internet data. Yeah. Maybe just take their phones when they go to bed. Man, you know, kids, they'd have a burner. Yeah. You take the kid's phone and they're like, oh, shucks. You got my phone, dad. And then you're gone. And they're like, Here's the $30 phone I got. I'm going to text with this one. This does, it just, it just seems like a bit of an overreaction. A little, a touch. Just fucking up the internet. All, how did he not get murdered? I don't know. I would well. lose I my know. shit. I know, right? I would be very upset. 
I, I don't know. It, it's. And isn't that sad? Because we're from the last generation that like grew up without internet. Like we are of the generation where the internet became a thing. Right. So we definitely know how to occupy ourselves without it. Or at least we did at one point in time. Yeah, but it sucked, Tara. Tara, I'm like Tara. I, no, I, I like reading books. USA up all night, Tara. Yeah, but now you know there's there's stations that play episodes of the X Files all night from like eleven to two. Except now that channel is up to season seven and. Whew. So, yeah. All right. Last one this week. And holy shit. Um. What? It's, it's amazing that this was not nefarious. I'll say, considering this point in time in American history. This wasn't, this was not sinister. This was just stupid. Brigham Young University students displaced from dorm after homemade rocket fuel explodes what several, why <laughs> several students at brigham young university were displaced from their dorm after some homemade rocket fuel exploded it happened sunday around 4 30 p.m when a fire alarm went off at a building in the heritage halls police arrived police arri firefighters arrived and found sprinklers were flooding the main floor a resident in one of the dorm rooms was cooking up homemade rocket fuel it had flashed, caused a fireball, and then created enough heat that it tripped the sprinkler system. It is unclear why the 22-year-old man was making <laughs> homemade fuel. Instructions for making it and using it in model rockets can be found online, but Long says it's too early to know the motive. We don't know right now. We don't have an answer today. Long described the man as very cooperative and forthcoming and said there's no evidence of sinister motives behind making the fuel. So... And you're just like, you're, you're still stuck at homemade rocket fuel. In your dorm. In your dorm. Not outside. Men, Men are not okay. <laughs> like, you should, why would you not do this shit outside? Like, what happens to men? <laughs> After toddlerhood, <laughs> that makes you just want to blow up the world. I don't. I don't want to blow things up. I like building things. The things I build you don't explode. You have action figure that you made shoot that you made shoot gasoline. I didn't do that. My cousin Ramsey did that. Okay. And he he tormented me with it. Okay, fair. In, in case you're, I'm watching, just saying. In case you're watching this and you don't understand what we're talking about, um. The He-Man action figure Cobra Con, uh, it's it squirts water, a little mist in it. So it was a deadly venom mist. Um, and my cousin, my older cousin, uh, filled it with rubbing alcohol and found a lighter and turned my He-Man into a makeshift flamethrower. So, um, see, but what I'm saying, <clears throat> a whole mostly girls don't do this. Yeah, on the whole, well. It and I know someone in the YouTube comments is going to come up and be like, women, my cousin's roommate's best friend. I know. I, I said mostly. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of a, a geographical thing on that one, Tara. You're, if you're, if you're a little bit further from an urban center, you're more than, you're more likely to, there's, there's not, there's fuck all else to do. So you're more likely to be hanging out with the boys and blowing shit up and then start blowing shit up yourself. Idea. <laughs> I, I feel like this is a man thing. <laughs> Something at some point in the male brain. Well, this I, a, a little switch just flips and you're like, not, fire! This was not for explosive purposes. He actually, I, I could kind of understand he wanted to make a model rocket. Because I've wanted to do stuff. All right. Here's how it works. Hey, you don't make fuel in your dorm. No. Not but safe. here's how it works. You see something online. It looks neat. You think to yourself, I could do that. I want to try it. And then you think, wait, I'm broke. 
what's the least expensive way I can do this? You think maybe a small, enclosed, poorly ventilated space is not the place for this project. <laughs> Because I was an art student, and I had to use spray adhesive and spray fixative, and I knew not to do that shit in my dorm room, because I didn't want to be high for a week. Imagine if you, just living in that dorm room, and the noise, the sound of this going off. And you're, you're at Brigham Young, so I don't know what the, I mean, it's not like anybody's, well, no, I, I say there's not like anybody's They're not fucking. even allowed to have caffeine. Yeah. Maybe this is what happens when you won't let a kid have a Coke. <sighs> I, I was about to say they're, they're not fucking, but they're, they're, don't Google soaking. It'll fuck with your head. No, oh. <laughs> I was just going to ask if you knew yeah, about that. Da, don't, yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's, uh, yeah, don't, don't Google that one. That's, yeah. It's the saddest loophole. It is. <laughs> it's, it's even worse than anal, I swear. <laughs> mm. So sad that... Garfunkel and Oates won't write a song about it. I know. But it's just, it. Just kids, limit, there, there are limited activities you can do in your dorm that are safe. Okay? Just. I'm just. I'll, go outside. You're sitting in your dorm room and then, boom! And then fire alarms and then there's sprinklers. And all your and all your stuff is wrecked, but oh, you're in a dorm. Ugh. So what are you gonna do about it? I had a friend my freshman year of college. Her parents, she had all her clothes in a box that her parents tied to the top of the car. And on the drive, the box fell off the top of the car. This poor girl arrived at college with like literally the clothes on her back. And that was it. So like her parents had to take her like and we were there a week early for band camp. So like after band camp every day, her parents had to hang out and take her shopping. Because she had no clothes. Tied a box to the roof. I'm I'm not saying it was the best engineering choice. Hello there. You're on you're on my footrest. Are you, are you, she's getting, she's comfy on my footrest now. Okay. Hi there. It's weird. Cause I have a glass desk and I look down and there's shit. You can just see her. <laughs> yeah. It's just, hi, how you doing? Are you comfy? You get, she's, she's comfy. I think, I think she's comfy. So first thing we learned this week is, um, maybe don't mix the explosive compounds indoors. No. I mean, maybe don't mix them at all. But. Yeah. But if you must. Like, the, one of the most notorious phrases in all of human history has been, how hard can it be? Yeah. Um, we've learned that, yeah, trying to, to, to monitor your kid's internet usage, good idea. Great. If you're, if you're going to super technological links, maybe you got to. Pull it back just a, just a little. Um, we've learned lawyers can be idiots too. Super drunken idiots. We've learned that a site called Rent a Hitman is probably too good to be true. Yeah. And sweetie, you're 14. You, you, trust me, it's don't. You, he doesn't need to. Oh, say. I mean, he might be a real piece of shit. But murder is still not the answer. Yeah, not not because, you know, we particularly care about him. It's just, you know, the consequences suck. Um, we've learned that... Uh, we I don't know why we have to keep learning this. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Stay the fuck out of the chimney. It's not an entryway. It's not even an exit. No. Are you smoke? Then stay the fuck out! Unless you are the smoke monster from Lost, that is not a valid entrance for you. And and finally this week, we've learned that if you look in the mirror, 
and you see this, stay your ass home. Stay your ass home. <laughs> just ride it out on the couch, man. Order some pizza. Just put on public broadcasting or something. Yeah. PBS Kids, just watch that shit. Just watch Peppa the Pig. Yeah. Who's apparently seven feet tall. I just learned that this week. Apparently Peppa the Pig is a fucking giant, which is terrifying. Okay, maybe so don't watch PBS Kids. Maybe don't watch... <laughs> Holy shit. 